Hello everyone and happy Wednesday. Welcome to this month's webinar, Winter is Coming. Now's the time to plan your end of year campaign. I am Pearl Hoagland and I am the Senior Manager for the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy. I will be your moderator today. Before we get started, a couple notes. This webinar will be conversational with the opportunity to ask questions during the webinar, as well as a Q&A following the presentation. Please submit any questions you have in the chat box using your GoToWebinar control panel. In the days following the webinar, you will receive an email with the slide deck and recording to review again at your leisure. You've got a cause, learn how to fund it. At the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy, we enhance fundraisers' skills so they can develop and sustain donor relationships to advance their cause in today's growing giving landscape through a proven contemporary curriculum presented by world-class nonprofit leaders, best-in-class faculty, and renowned philanthropists. We want to take a moment to recognize our important affiliate partners who provide training and education to fundraisers across the country. Check out the map to find an institute in your community. Now, if you're on social media, please give us a shout out using the hashtag SIP webinar and tag us. I am very pleased to introduce today's presenter, Katie Adams Farrell, co-founder of Keratin Collaborative and trainer for the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy. Katie is an entrepreneurial fundraising and nonprofit industry expert, specializing in strategic planning, fund development, and database management. Katie has managed projects and helped nonprofits across Southern California raise hundreds of millions of dollars. She co-founded her company, Keratin Collaborative, with the mission to ampl amplify social impact through strategic planning, innovative project design, marketing, and fundraising. Keratin provides a range of services to clients locally and globally, from web development to grant writing. Welcome, Katie, and thanks for being here. Hi, everyone. I am extremely happy to be here. Um, I've been a trainer with the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy for a few years now. I'm personally super passionate about the cause selling cycle, which I'll talk a little bit more about, and the curriculum. Um, thank you so much for being here today, especially to talk about something as important as your year-end campaign. So we're just going to dive right in. The year-end is the most wonderful time of the year. If I could sing, I would, but I can't, so I won't. Um, the good news is this, it is the single biggest month for charitable contributions. December is the single biggest month for charitable contributions to nonprofit organizations. 30% of annual gifts come in December. Here's the bad news. Everyone is asking for money. So how do we set ourselves up to have a really successful year end campaign to capitalize on the warm giving spirit, the generosity of the season, um, and also use it as a tool to steward and follow up with some of our donors that have been supporting year round. So we're going to go into depth um, in aspects of planning a successful campaign. So our objectives for today are learn tips for crafting a successful year end campaign, learn how to use the cause selling cycle basics to strengthen your storytelling. Now, if this is your first webinar uh, hosted by the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy, you're probably like, what is she talking about the cause selling cycle? I'm gonna give you a quick overview, but it's gonna be a really quick overview. Um, so I advise that you absolutely do a little bit of research into additional opportunities to learn more about the cause selling cycle because it is absolutely entrepreneurial fundraising. It's, you know, uh, the right way to approach donors of the future. So 21st century donors. And we're going to sample some year end campaign formats and timelines to meet multiple objectives, some of which you will share uh, with us. So to get us started, we're going to launch into a poll here. Do you or does your organization participate in Giving Tuesday? Yes. No. What is Giving Tuesday? I have not, but I'm planning to. A poll will launch on your screen. We'll give it about 20 seconds to get your answers in, and then we'll take a look at the results.
All right, let's give it about 10 more seconds. Okay, let's take a look at the results. Yes, Katie, you can see them? I do, I can see them, yes. 11% um, said, what is Giving Tuesday? And to be perfectly honest, that's a little bit surprising to me. So super, super quickly, Giving Tuesday is um, kind of the philanthropy industry's response to Black Friday. So Giving Tuesday is an online global fundraising initiative where organizations generally by email, but some use direct mail as well, but generally by email and social media um, generate in one day uh, a lot of money for their cause. So as, as a quick example, um, in Orange County, which is where I'm from, Orange County, California, not Florida, um, we do a collaborative Giving Tuesday. And so a number of organizations participate in a Giving Tuesday campaign, which we all send out to our mail lists. Um, and then we uh, put those funds together and we, we split them up equally. So Giving Tuesday, just to sum it up, Giving Tuesday is um, an online, generally online fundraising campaign that's kind of a global initiative response to Black Friday. Um, but the vast majority of us do participate in Giving Tuesday um, or are planning to participate in Giving Tuesday, which is great. So, oh, let me do, got it. Leading into our next poll then, for those of you who do or have participated in Giving Tuesday, how do you weave it into your campaigns? Giving Tuesday kicks off your annual campaign. You haven't integrated Giving Tuesday. You've never done Giving Tuesday or other. And you can go ahead and tell us in the chat if there are additional ways that you integrate Giving Tuesday. Once again, a poll will launch on your screen and we'll give it about 20 seconds again. All right, about 10 more seconds to get your answers in, then we'll take a look at the results. All right, let's see what we have. Giving Tuesday is the kickoff, 15%. We haven't integrated Giving Tuesday, 35%. 29% have never planned a Giving Tuesday campaign. And there's 21% that say other. Pearl, I'm wondering if you could give us some of those other responses if they showed up in the chat. Yes, they are flowing in. Someone oh, said they've used yes, Giving Tuesday. <laughs> Someone said that you've used it poorly. Um, <laughs> it is one part of a multi-pronged campaign. Perfect. Giving Tuesday is an additional touch point to donors slash prospects with similar messaging, um, but with an amplified social media focus. Okay, makes sense. We, we start our campaign mid-November and then send an email on Giving Tuesday. We participate in conjunction with the year-end appeal. Uh, the last one is campaign starts earlier in November. Oh, wait, let's oh, okay. see. We may, we may have one more. We use a mail campaign to kick things off and then use the same messaging online via Giving Tuesday social media campaign. Awesome. That sounds great. Um, and those are all very strategic responses and absolutely things we're going to review today. So hopefully um, I can deliver some tips to you to make your campaigns even more compelling. And we look forward to hearing your responses too. So let's keep on going. As I promised, uh, a brief overview of the cause selling cycle. So the cause selling cycle is a fundraising cycle for entrepreneurial fundraising. So it is, if you are familiar with sales processes, it is absolutely anchored in sales processes where there's, you know, prospecting, approach, presentation, the ask and stewardship. What we have found is that applying some of these sales strategies to fundraising ensures that we build much, much stronger relationships. So even though it's called the cause selling cycle, we have to remember that like Everything basically we do is sales. We are constantly positioning ourselves for our success in life, whether that be advocating for some sort of medical treatment that you may need or, you know, in your day to day fundraising activities. Um, so please don't let the word selling kind of get in the way of your application of the cause selling cycle, because really it is focused on building relationships. And so if you look at um, if you look at the first two phases, which is the vast majority of the cycle, 
you will see that that is entirely relationship building. And when you get to phase three, the ask, if you follow the cycle, generally comes at about 10% of the time you spend on the ask. So we are not drilling at home, we are presenting our cause. We're getting a lot of feedback from our donors, potential donors, about what they want their impact to be, how they want to interact with our organization. We're discovering more about them and how we can directly relate our cause to their desire for impact and philanthropy. We're going to spend some time in the presentation, whereas that's where we kind of detail the benefits um, of being involved in our cause. Handling objections is really uncomfortable for a lot of people. It's an important part of the cause selling cycle, and we do uh, webinars and training specifically on handling objectives. Um, as you know, no doesn't always mean no. That doesn't mean chase people when they really don't want to talk to you. But um, you know, people are people and they have all kinds of things going on in their lives. So potentially that objection is not, no, I'm never going to give you money, but just this isn't the right time. Important to be able to handle those and kind of find out a little bit more. Then by the time you get to the ask, it's real quick. They're already ready. You know they're going to say yes. They say yes, you feel awesome. And then you continue to follow up with them and they go back through the cycle. Um, so please feel free to read a little bit more into the cost selling cycle. I'm going to refer to it a couple of times in this presentation um, because it helps with the relationship building and kind of structuring your story arc as well. So what are the pieces of a successful campaign then? We know that pretty much everybody is doing a year-end campaign. So what makes ours successful? Early planning. You're here, right? You're here right now. So great. Good job. It's August. You're doing awesome. Uh, setting a distinct goal, great storytelling, multiple touches, you know, which one of our shares said they kick it off with a mail campaign and then follow up with a number of emails and social media posts. So multiple touches, cross channels, involves your major donors and stewardship. It's really easy to forget about that last piece you know, we are tired. We've really rocked it hard for a couple of months. We're at the end of the campaign. We have to remember that follow up. The follow up is potentially one of the most critical aspects of any year end campaign. Hopefully, it's a time where you bring new people to your cause. And so, onboarding any of your new donors and making sure that all of your donors that have participated feel really special is super important. All right. So I like to think of my campaign planning in three phases. The first is planning, the second is execution, and the third is follow-up. So I've put together this uh, checklist for you, three phases checklist. And remember too, that within a couple of days, you're going to receive this presentation. So you don't like need to hustle to screenshot or, you know, furiously take notes because you'll have this information. Feel free to take this, adapt it as you see fit. Of course, every organization is different and, and it's important for you to be able to customize to best fit the needs of your organization. Um, but we're gonna go through a couple of these things really quick. So what's important in the planning phase? Well, evaluating past campaign performance. So even if you haven't done a year-end campaign in the past, you potentially have done some sort of email fundraising or some sort of targeted marketing campaign, whether that be direct mail or a social media campaign. So take a look at that campaign, right? Um, think about what, uh, who participated in that campaign um, and what the results were. Then for this year's campaign, define the focus and the components. Remember that we want one story. That doesn't mean that you can't tell different aspects of the story, but you want one main story. You can set your target markets and segment lists. The mailing list, whether that's email or social media or mail mail, snail mail, um, segmenting and working on those lists, as you know, can take weeks and weeks. So start that stuff early because it's such a slog. And if you're trying to get out your email, but you're still working on uh, fixing your list, you know, it's just super pain. So start early on that one. Set a distinct goal. We're going to talk a little bit more about this specifically. Um, make a detailed task map with dates. You can start with the date you want that first main campaign message to arrive in their inboxes or their mailboxes and then go back from there. If, for example, many of you said that you launch your year-end campaign uh, with Giving Tuesday, 
what do you want to launch on Giving Tuesday? And then go back from there. Make sure you plan in lots of time for revisions and design, right? I know that uh, probably most of us have design teams and they do not like doing things at the last second. So give them the time that they need to be creative so that they can really make your story shine. Um, and remember that if your campaign includes direct mail and you use a nonprofit bulk uh, through your mail house, that the nonprofit bulk rate saves you a lot of money. It also takes a long time. So give yourself at least five to seven days for that to drop. Um, and then and then gather your assets. Uh, what kind of imagery are you going to need to use? Do you need to write these stories? Do you need to gather uh, testimonials from any of your, your clients or beneficiaries? You know, what are the aspects of the campaign that you need to have and you need to start gathering from other people and start that early so that we're not asking them at the last minute? Okay, so moving on to the execution phase. If we do the planning phase right, our execution phase is is not that tough, right? It's just following the plan we've set out and most of our stuff's already put together. So build a campaign webpage. Um, I think that it's excruciatingly important for every campaign to have a dedicated web page. So if you're just sending people from your email or your social media link or even your snail mail um, to your just like general PayPal kind of page, uh, I would recommend building a dedicated campaign web page because having that cohesive story and look is really, really important because there is a lot of drop off between clicking on the button to go to the web page and then actually entering in the credit card information. So the more cohesive we can make the experience, the better. Also remember when you're building your campaign web page, the fewer the clicks to putting in the credit card information, the better, right? Um, send to save the date. So potentially you want to, if you're thinking about launching your campaign on Giving Tuesday, then you could send a save the date email that just says, hi, remember Giving Tuesday is on, I don't remember what the date is now, November, da 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 da. Um, remember to keep us in, in um, your mind, top of mind, or however you may structure that, but just a really quick email save the date to reinforce that that's coming up. If you are doing a significant aspect of your uh, campaign through email, you may want to A-B test your emails to see which campaign messages are the strongest. You can do, most of us have Constant Conduct or MailChimp or another email service provider who, will, who really allows us to do this, like they have it right in there. Um, so take a look at what capacities your mail list provider has. Um, and if that's something you want to pursue with your organization, it's something that will can inform uh, future campaigns too, because you'll learn what kind of language resonates best with your donor and mail list. Those last few weeks, I know you're tired. Um, it's also the holidays and you're shopping or, you know, vacation, going to see family, whatever it might be. But stay strong those last few weeks and potentially your campaign ends a couple weeks before the year ends and that's fine, absolutely fine, enjoy the holidays. Um, but just remember, you might want a day-to-day -day list for whatever those last few weeks or days are leading up to the close of your campaign because, you know, as fundraisers, uh, we tend to be a little bit type A and, and maybe even a little bit perfectionistic. So if we don't finish the campaign strong, we're not going to feel good about it. So make sure you do everything you absolutely can to feel strong, to feel good about the performance, to meet that goal. And then, you know, even if you didn't meet your goal, um, which that never happens, that you gave it your best shot and it will inform planning moving forward. All right, phase three, follow-up. Remember what time of the year it is. Give a double dose of gratitude, shower them with gratitude. Um, it's incredibly wonderful that they're there with you and that they're making time to give to your cause in this incredibly busy time of year. So just remember to follow up. Give them details on what their impact was. Did your year-end campaign specifically fund uh, a project? For example, I did a year-end campaign a couple of years ago uh, where our donors gave to a fund that then provided swim scholarships for young kids who didn't know how to swim. Um, and so they, I was able to tell them in January and February that we offered X number of scholarships to X families who are participating in swim lessons. 
So, you know, that was a really important and very kind of succinct way to illustrate impact. Don't forget to evaluate. I know it's like the last thing you want to do, but don't wait until next August when winter is coming again to evaluate. Go ahead and finish it up. Uh, take a good look at it because it, it also gives you a good indication of how you can change things, you know, throughout the year for your fundraising strategies and then document. Every single year, we don't need to recreate the wheel, right? Document everything you do, keep all of those templates, keep all of that language, keep your checklist, keep all of the dates that you send stuff out, keep important stuff all in one place, a Google Doc, a Word Doc, whatever you want. Doesn't have to be beautiful, but document everything. Um, it will help moving forward. Okay, goal setting. A campaign with a defined goal will lead to better results every single time um, it's just like a psychological thing right when we know exactly what we're aiming for we're way more likely to hit it and there's that cute like little guy with the target right cute little guy with the target all right here's some tips and goal setting what to consider past year's performance so in your past year's performance this includes stuff like your number of respondents to your campaign and this may be clicks as well as gifts versus the list. So what percentage of people responded to your campaign and what percentage of those actually went through and made a gift? What was the average gift size? What was the timing? Um, what was going on with your organization during that period of time, right? Like, was it an anniversary year? People are way more generous in anniversary years. It's some kind of psychological thing. So think about what was going on with your organization? What was going on in the world? that absolutely affects our fundraising um, and evaluate that against actual metrics and production performance. We can't just randomly set a goal where we don't have the mail list to back it up. Your target markets and lists, your major and annual gifts asks. So what I mean by that is, are there major donors that you want to inspire to give more. A year-end campaign is a wonderful time to do that. Of course, they're not going to give more because you send them a letter and a few emails. That's gonna be a personal ask. Build that into your campaign, all of these personal asks. Do you have some donors who give you annual gifts on a regular basis, but for some reason, like haven't closed out this year or no, normally do that in November, December? Make sure you put those into, into this whole campaign um, and, and because it's a, a great tool for following up with some of those donors that maybe haven't given yet. Also, do you have a match? Um, matches are great challenge, match, challenge, same thing. Um, they're great in inspiring people to collectively meet a goal. And, um, also if especially corporate donors love that extra recognition. So say you get a corporate match of, and I'm not talking about a match through somebody's company. I'm talking about a gift that somebody gives to you and says, I want you to use this gift to leverage donations moving forward. So um, I am just saying names here. Southern California Edison gave me $2,500. I uh, used it as a challenge to the rest of my list you know, we only get this $2,500 if our donors come through and match it. So that's what I mean by a match or a challenge. It's a great way to kind of ignite some excitement in your campaign halfway through or towards the end. Probably the single most important success of your campaign is dependent directly on how well you tell the story. If it's a compelling story that makes people feel something and not feel bad, right? That makes people feel good, then they're really inclined to support you. So choose one story or focus. Now, maybe you do have a focus that has a couple of different stories that you want to drip throughout your emails. That's great, but make sure it's really one idea, one focus. So we're not talking about oh, this museum does did this amazing exhibition, and then it did this amazing film series, and then it did this amazing whatever, whatever. Um, it's just one thing. This exhibition 
was amazing for these reasons. It included a component of children coming to the museum to explore art that they'd never seen before, the first time at their museum, right? Um, it was an emerging artist who hadn't exhibited out of their home state, right? So there's a number of stories that you could then tell about that one focus. Remember the story arc. So your story arc connects across emails and channels. So when you send out an email, you're also gonna back that up with posts on social media that tell that same story. So you're, it's a really unified approach across channels. And then you can structure uh, your story using the cause selling cycle. Um, so remember, uh, many of you have uh, understood the cause selling cycle before. So you can think about the structure and content of your emails through the approach, which is, you know, where you introduce your nonprofit in your story. This is like in the story arc, this is a place where you kind of present the conflict, you know, and the hero. Um, in the presentation, you go more in depth into what the benefits of being involved in your organization are. Then you have the ask and follow up, right? So your follow up, keep that story going all the way through your follow up. Um, here are some of the presentation tools, and if you do not have the textbook, I, I absolutely encourage you to grab the textbook because there are great tools uh, throughout, just like wonderful tidbits sprinkled throughout. Some, these are some of the presentation tools that you could utilize in your campaigns from the cost selling textbook. Grab their attention, right? You want a hook. Get them involved, meaning uh, watch a video. Um, read a story that really catches their heartstrings, right? Get them involved in some way. Paint a picture with metaphor. So you can't have all images, right? You have to be able to use words too. We're sending out letters, especially we're sending out emails. So paint a picture with metaphor. Don't be afraid to use uh, ornate language. Um, it, it makes the reading experience a lot more joyful. Of course, like don't go crazy. You wanna be direct. You want them to know what you're writing about and why you're writing it. But think like you're the person that's opening this letter. What, what would you enjoy reading? You can also uh, utilize quantitative visualizations. I'm talking about like an infographic or charts. And the reason for this is that not everybody is like, you know, a master's in language arts. Um, there are some analytical people out there too who are extremely generous. And so what makes sense with their sensibility is like, I want to see this data in some sort of format that makes sense to me. So you can utilize quantitative visualizations as well. Um, I would not throw all of these into one letter or one email. Um, just remember that you can sprinkle them throughout your campaign as you plan. Um, sorry for that ding. Let me turn that off. All right. Uh, multiple touches. So yes, they are getting absolutely bombarded in the end of the year, right? We're all doing year end campaigns. They're getting bombarded. Don't let that hold you back from reaching out because remember that if they're not hearing from you, they're hearing from someone else. So you might as well be that person that they're hearing from, right? And then be sure to integrate your communications channels direct mail, email, social media, phone calls. You may or may not do phone calls um, with your annual gift donors or your major gift donors. You're definitely doing phone calls or uh, meetings even. Make sure you integrate all of those channels. Those are, those are multiple touches. And not only with your story arc, but that you realize that a person is getting a letter in the mail from you. Then they're getting an email from you. Then they're seeing you pop up on Facebook. The more the touches, the more likely they are to go do stuff. Because remember, it's a busy time of year. Like, Oh, I was, I got the letter in the mail and then I set it down in that, that pile of mail. That's like that you have to do this at some point. Um, and it also went there with all like the PTA forms and the renew my, my AAA membership. Um, and I never got to it, but then you sent me an email and I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to star this. And then I saw you on social media. And by the time I had seen you on social media, I was able to click through and say, oh yes, I need to do this. They made it easy for me. Right. Major donors, a successful campaign will always involve your major donors. So some of you may need to structure your campaign goal so that your major gifts asks sit outside because you also have, you know, annual goals for your major gifts donors. I absolutely get that. That makes perfect sense. You can do it either way, whatever works best for your organization. But I gotta say, 
that it is an excellent time of year to involve your major donors. And if they, it's the right time to ask them to bump up their giving, do it. So secure those year-end annual gifts. Enlist peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. A lot of us have board members, have a couple of board members, maybe not all of our board members, um, at least a couple of board members or other donors who aren't involved in the board who are 100% ready to send your email out, to send your you know, Facebook fundraiser out, to make personal ask and invitations to their friends. Utilize these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Ask them specifically, we're doing this year-end campaign. Um, thank you so much for always supporting everything we do. Would you be willing to help us meet our goal, right? Enlist those peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Some of your major gifts tools, maybe a giving catalog. So I, I actually have an image of this um, towards the end of the presentation. And so we'll talk about it a little bit more. But what I mean by a giving catalog is a web page that has uh, or an email or whatever that has various giving opportunities that are really specific. So your $200 uh, contribution will pay for six meals for people experiencing homelessness, right? So it's really specific. Your $500 gift will pay for three weeks of accommodations um, and clothing and a health exam for a person experiencing homelessness, right? So uh, those numbers are not representative of anything other than what came out of my brain. So, you know, just, just a little disclaimer there, but that's those are examples of how you can put together a giving catalog where somebody can be like, oh, this is what I'm doing for 200 bucks, ding, right? Challenge match, we also talked about that already a little bit, but those are definitely major gifts tools. When I'm, when I'm talking about the challenge match as being a major gift tool, that's on the, the challenge side, right? So you can ask one of your donors who potentially hasn't given yet or whom you'd like to upgrade uh, to be a part of the challenge, to actually issue the challenge. And those donors love that you want to leverage their gift for bigger impact on the organization. And so especially if you're speaking with a business owner or somebody who is business minded, leverage your gift is extremely great language to use. Upgrade your loyal and longtime donors. So I also mentioned this before, but if somebody has been giving an annual gift at the $1,000 level for 13 years, okay, 13 years would be extreme for three years. Um, and you know they have the capacity to give more or the inclination to give more. It might be a good time to ask them for a little bit more. Follow up. Please do not forget to steward. I know you're tired. I totally get it. Please don't forget to steward. Um, from cause selling curriculum. There are three keys to donor retention and you can infuse these throughout your follow-up. Think like a donor. How would you want to be treated, right? What would you want a tax receipt? Here's like a template letter and a tax receipt. Granted, I do want my tax receipt because I am going to file my taxes and I'm gonna need that receipt. So that, that's very valuable to me, but does it come with a note card? Does it come with a personalized note on my tax receipt? Does it come with a, a phone call? What are those extra measures that you can do that your donor would really appreciate? Say thank you like you mean it, right? That's what we're saying, a template, a template email or a template letter uh, that just is, it's not gonna do it this time of year. And treat everyone like a major donor. So we are very likely to spend the vast majority of our time, 80% of our time with 20% of our donors. And those donors are not necessarily our most generous. They're kind of like whoever takes up time and kind of whoever we like to. So think about treating everyone like a major donor, um, how you can segment your time and your donor list to make the most out of your communications. And so, Maybe everybody that gives you 
um, $50 to $250, you make a phone call and you enlist your volunteers, you enlist your board of directors, you enlist whoever you can um, to help you make those phone calls because maybe every single person this time of year gets a phone call or maybe every single person this time of year gets a note card, right? Then of course, with your major donors, you'll wanna spend more time and go out to lunch and or coffee or whatever it is, but think of the ways that you can make your lower level donors feel like major donors. And be sure to tell them what's next. They're going to be hearing from you again. Um, do you have an event coming up? Do you have a big initiative coming up? Um, potentially don't tell them I have another fundraising campaign scheduled for February. So, you know, get out your checkbook. Not, not that, this is a place to say thank you, but hope to see you at our VIP donor breakfast on Valentine's Day, February 13th, 2020, right? That kind of deal. So we're getting into some, some uh, sample timelines. Um, I'm not gonna go over in great detail because I think that what's gonna be really wonderful for us is to share some ideas with each other. Um, remember that you get this deck, so you'll get your sample timeline, but start in August building your plan. Do your evaluation, look at your previous campaigns, define your focus, set targets, get feedback. Well, let me pause for a second. One of the ways to seed your annual and major gifts donors is to say to them, hey, we're doing this year-end campaign. I was wondering if you would take a look at it. And we all have these relationships, right? That you can't do this with every donor, but we all have these relationships with donors whom we're really close to and who maybe even think of us as a mentee of sorts. Utilize that relationship to get feedback. If you have a letter that you'd like them to you know, provide feedback on or, or the strategy behind your campaign, go ahead and use that, you know, share it with them, get their feedback. And then when you ask them for a gift in a month or two, they're going to be a lot more likely to say, yeah, of course, they've already bought in, right? Segment and create your task map. All right, September, this is when we're getting into execution already, right? Because we're gathering our assets, we're getting feedback, we're writing content, we're doing the design, and we're building our campaign website. And then October, we're straight into execution. You get your save the date out, you make some of your major gifts asks. November also execution, maybe you're launching on giving day or right before giving day as, as somebody else shared. Um, your A-B testing early in your campaign. December is go time, right? You need an editorial calendar that maximizes those channels. Maybe September 15th is when you uh, throw in that challenge or that match. And then September 27th to, I mean, September, oh, don't we wish, December 27th to December 31st is that final blitz. Like every day, maybe a couple times a day, we're sending out those emails, making sure people get it in there. And then January and February, you're working on your follow-up. You're thanking the donors. You're onboarding new people that have come into your cause. You're documenting absolutely everything you did and you're evaluating your progress. Here are some sample formats. You may consider doing an e-card. Um, you'll want a couple of different designs for your e-card, but an e-card is, you know, um, an image, basically. There are definitely sources for sending an e-card that does like the pretty like open thing and then your card comes out. And, and that may actually be a better touch for a follow-up thank you email. Um, these e-cards uh, are, are really a kind of a single image with an ask. Challenge match. So here's an example of a challenge match. Your donated dollars will go twice as far. Here's an example of that gift giving catalog I was telling you about. So this one is embedded in an email. Um, it's not its own web page, although I bet you it takes you to a web page. Holiday giving catalog, shop now. And then lastly, a year end campaign is a great time to launch a recurring donation campaign. So maybe that's something that you've thought about doing um, or that you do regularly, but you'll see here in this example, um, the opportunity is a recurring donation. So even if somebody puts in $10, give monthly, um, this may be the right time of year to launch something like that. 
A few things to remember. I realize we've gone through a lot of content and I look forward to the community sharing of specifics and feel free to ask me any questions you may have. So a few things to remember as we're kind of wrapping up the presentation aspect of this webinar. Your year-end campaign will only be as successful as your audiences are engaged. So if you, have, if you are planning to primarily use email and social media as your channels, which is clearly the least expensive way to do a year-end campaign, um, if you've sent them two emails all year long and like posted on social media a handful of times and your audience is engaged, you can absolutely use this campaign as an opportunity to bring in new people to your cause and to generate year-end gifts, but it's not going to bring a bunch of bucks, right? You're not going to send, you're not going to get $10,000 from a cold email list, right? So remember that uh, your lists need to be previously engaged in order for your year-end campaign to be really successful, but you can also use that as an engagement tool. Be sure your website donation page is super easy to use. I mentioned this before, but like a bunch of clicks, especially because people do the vast majority of stuff on their phone. So make sure that give page is real easy to do on mobile. I could just be my credit card information is already saved there, right? Segmenting is important. So as much as you can personalize, uh, the emails that go out or the letters that go out, you know, aspects of your uh, of your mail list may be five hundred to twenty five hundred dollar donations, whereas your twenty five dollar donations have a slightly different letter. Same story, same story, but you know, slightly different tone. Uh, that's really important. And as much as you can personalize, do it. So if you're sending, you know, a, a letter to your uh, 1,000 and above donors, maybe that's something that you write a note on, or maybe you follow up uh, with an email after that one goes out. You do not have to exclude individuals who have given in the past 30 to 60 days. I just want to give you that indicator that that's kind of the generally the best practice. You don't want uh, people to feel overly taxed, especially if potentially your organization, if you haven't followed up with that donor uh, personally since they gave and potentially all they got was the tax receipt, you probably don't want to ask them again, but that's a decision you'll have to make about your donor base in your mail list. And uh, this is another kind of statistic, not to say that there aren't outliers here, but it takes about 1,000 emails to raise $36. So when you're thinking about planning your campaign, remember you need multiple emails, you need not lots of names on that list in order to make it really successful. All right, so now we're gonna move into the community share portion of our webinar. Um, so I'm gonna bring back Pearl because she is extremely awesome and wonderful and helpful. So um, share in a couple of very quick sentences, what has worked for you? Do you have a campaign that, that really worked for you? Here's an example, because I, you know, the more we get through, the better, right? So don't write me a novel, write a couple of sentences. Um, last year, we launched our giving campaign, our year-end campaign with Giving Tuesday. We raised $2,000 in Giving Tuesday, and then we, um, got a challenge from a corporation that's been really close to us and we were able to finish the year, you know, having met our goal, right? So a couple of sentences, what's worked for you? All right, let's see what is coming in. Oh, and also one quick thing, um, if you have questions, that's next. So this is share some positive stories about what you've done with the community and then we'll answer questions on the next slide. All right, here's one that just popped up. Awesome. Um, this organization had a campaign that was progressing slowly. They mm. secured, oh, Katie, they secured a $1,000 challenge match from an annual donor, um, which they used to finish the campaign strong and accomplish their goal. Oh, awesome, nice work. Yeah, that challenge is great to bring in kind of as your, you know, it's like your cleanup hitter. A uh, big baseball family here. So, you know, I don't know <laughs> if everyone's familiar with the baseball analogy, but you know, your big guns, you bring in your big guns. 
All right, this next one, I'm just reading through it. Last year, they kicked off an annual campaign oh, with Giving Tuesday, oh. um, and they did it all on Facebook. Oh. So into their campaign, they realized they weren't meeting their goal and hadn't raised as much in the previous year. So for the last half of the campaign, they focused on email fundraising and did much better. Oh, uh, yeah. That, I mean, that's actually a really good point. Thank you for to whoever shared that. Um, Facebook is not likely to raise you a bunch of money unless you have an incredibly engaged Facebook following. And like that generally happens in a group or a secret group rather than a page. Um, a lot of that has to do with Facebook's algorithms, right? Like how likely are these people to, even if you have a bunch of followers, how likely are the people that follow you or friend you to see your post? Um, so I absolutely recommend that while social media is incredibly important for keeping your organization top of mind, it's not likely to be your primary driver of income generation uh, for a year end campaign or any campaign. We have some really great ones coming in. Okay, this next one is a specific email about donating stock resulted in a large gift from a new donor. Oh, nice. Cool. Yeah. Stock estate planning. Yes. Wonderful. Okay, we had a very successful challenge match of 60,000 and then leveraged that 60,000 to a donor who increases such a challenge with an additional 15% on money raised. Wow, that's nice. awesome. Yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah. next one. We uh, really utilized PayPal and Facebook's um, Giving Tuesday event last year, and that was super smooth. We are a very small organization, though, and about 75% comes from local face-to-face -face relationships. Right, right. And that, that makes perfect sense to me. That reinforces, um, is, is Facebook Giving Tuesday a, a wonderful tool? Absolutely. I think it's a lot more about visibility. Those face-to-face -face are individual uh, asks are going to be a lot more powerful. All right. We do have another one that's um, a comment and a question. So this year we have okay. a challenge grant from a foundation to our business community to support and leverage a STEM initiative. Any tips to go to corporates, uh, corporations slash foundations? So uh, the challenge is from a foundation to get specifically more corporate donors involved is what I'm hearing. Um, so first things first, if we're focused on local small businesses, that's great. In terms of larger corporations, they make their decisions about funding the following year in October. So a year end campaign, like, although you may get gifts from a large corporation, for example, banks at the end of the year, they made the decision about what you were going to get from them in their budget the previous October. So, um, in terms of garnering larger dollar amounts from larger corporations, I don't think that's necessarily that viable of a strategy. However, uh, you may be focused on local or small businesses, in which case you can approach those local small businesses like you would a major gifts donor, but make sure that when you're talking about the benefits associated, that it's, it's about their impact, right? Because a lot of small businesses they participate in opportunities like this. For example, they sponsor the local baseball team. I'm on the board of directors for my son's baseball little league. Um, they, they support the local school um, because they want to be viewed as an important contributor to the community and then to like, you know, stay visible so that when I'm like, oh yeah, my son has crazy teeth and needs an orthodontist, I'm going to go to that family orthodontics place just down the street because they sponsor his little league, right? So those are the kind of strategies that you would use to specifically sell benefits for smaller businesses. And Great. I don't know if that person can share in the chat if that answered your question or not, but if not, please feel free to send me an email. We will, um, while we wait for her to respond, I'll do one more before we go into the Q&A. The Great. extra tech... Oh, the extra touches we made were weekly between Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve and had different ways to give, for example, teacher classroom wish lists, giving through Amazon Smile, et cetera. So essentially offering different ways to give and weekly between Thanksgiving and New Year's Eve. Great. Yeah, because different things work for different people. I would stress that in those emails, um, you are also telling a story about the impact of your organization and not just focusing on the ask. 
because when you send a bunch of emails that are just an ask, you're taxing them. And they're like, oh my gosh, they're nickel and diming me. So, um, you know, just remember that although people want to give in various ways and you should absolutely ask them outright and directly and, and position that, um, make sure there's a lot of storytelling involved in, in those emails too. Great. Thank you. That is all that I can see okay. for um, samples. Yeah. Great. So we are like perfectly on time, Pearl. I'm just so impressed with us right now. We are. And we have a ton of questions coming in. So why don't we just jump into let's it? Let's launch in. Yeah, we can do a full five to seven minutes, I think, on questions. So let's let's do them. Perfect. Okay. So the first two uh, are just quick questions for clarification. We're going to ask them because we are guessing other folks have the same. The first one is what date is Giving Tuesday? Oh, you know what? <laughs> we should just like look that up. And we have the answer here. It's December 3rd, 2019. It's what? December 3rd, 2019. That's late. Usually it's November. So um, Thanksgiving this year is the 28th of November. Ah, all right. Well, that's why. The next question is someone wanted to know what A-B testing means. A-B testing. Okay. Um, that is 100% digital marketing lingo. I'm so sorry that I just launched into that without kind of giving you an example. So A-B testing You've got an A email and you've got a B email. And there are aspects of those emails that are slightly different. So it's the same story, but maybe you formatted it slightly different. Maybe the actual ask is using different language. So you are testing which email, either the A email or the B email, has a better response rate to inform the composition of your emails moving forward. Great, thank you. Okay, moving on. Um, do you find that donors are out for the holidays and are not seeing all the emails you may send at the end of the year? No, um, no, because, because this, right? Everybody <laughs> is, <laughs> I don't know. I held up my phone for anyone who wasn't looking at my screen at that point in time. Um, no, people are generally, so I, you know, I would say Christmas to new year's potentially, but, um, people are generally with their families and there's more downtime, right? They're not at work. Um, and so there's, there's, it's, it's a lot more likely that someone's gonna see something on their phone and, and click on it. So I think it's actually, I personally uh, think that an important strategy is those, you know, three, last three weeks of December to ramp up the communications. Perfect. All right, next question. When would you send out your Giving Tuesday Save the Date? Early November? Um, Giving Tuesday save the date one to two weeks before. If you send it out too early, they're going to completely forget about it. All right, let's see. We have uh, more questions coming in. Just a reminder, if you do have questions, please submit them in the chat box. Are there any specific pointers for newer organizations that have not done a major giving campaign before? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So if uh, either way, like if you're doing your first, this is your first time doing a year end campaign and you don't have a super big mail list or Facebook following or whatever it may be, um, and you don't have many um, major gifts donors, I think you can absolutely use this year end campaign as a way to inspire your donors and friends that you do have to bring in new people, right? So maybe the emphasis for you as a newer organization is, is really more about friend raising and bringing in new people. And you do that by enlisting your peer to peer fundraisers. Uh, you do that by, um, you know, being out in the community at various events and talking about your cause. Um, so uh, those are the ways that you know, that I personally think that you can utilize the campaign as a friend raising campaign and a visibility campaign in order to seed a more productive fundraising campaign next year. Great. Uh, we have time for one more question. Which fundraising platforms or programs would you recommend? Uh, for example, Classy, Blackbot, etc. cetera. Uh, I First of all, whatever works with your website is really, really important. So uh, Fundraise is, is uh, my personal favorite because they're from Long Beach and they're really cool people. They also have a great platform um, that has a lot of cool tools on the back end. So I like fun, Fundraise, no D, fun. Um, and I think they actually are a SIP partner too. Uh, so Fundraise is a good one. Classy is a good one. Uh, Blackbod's forms are pretty good. 
Um, so I, I think that that's really a question for your web developer or whoever that is working on it, because whatever the, the platform that you use in order to take these donations needs to look like your campaign and not all of the online giving uh, web forms. For example, Donor Perfect has online web forms, but they look like Donor Perfect. They don't look like your website. So that's what I would consider when making that decision. And for really small organizations, you may be totally comfortable using something like Fundly, F-U-N-D dot L-Y, which um, is going to take everybody to a dedicated campaign page. And it's like, go fund me, but for nonprofits, right? So if you're a small organization, that's no problem. Wonderful. Thank you, Katie. Um, if anyone else, I apologize that we can't get to all the questions. If anyone else has any questions, please don't hesitate to email Katie. Her contact information will be in one of the next slides. Um, Katie, thank you so much for this great webinar. If you could share one takeaway with the audience, what would it be? Oh, remember we were going to ask them for their takeaways. That's okay. I will, sh I will share mine. Oh, yes. Here. Let's do that first. That's okay. That's totally okay because we are... Um, kind of speeding through on time. So um, if I can say one thing, well, okay, Pearl, can I say two things? Of course. <laughs> okay, so my first thing is start planning early. So you've done this webinar, that's a great step. Now go back to your like desk and, and write out your task map and start now, right? Start now, because the more you put it off, the more it's going to get real heavy on segmenting your lists and trying to find the right challenge. So start right now, like today, start today. Um, and my second is please don't forget the follow up, right? It's an incredibly important part of the cost selling cycle. Uh, your donors are not inclined to give to you again if you if they don't feel appreciated. So don't forget the follow up. That's a perfect segue. Our October webinar is actually called Stewarding and Recognizing the Major Gift Donor. So especially if you are doing an annual campaign, be sure to tune in in October because we'll have some great tips for you. Awesome. Well, look at that. It's really convenient, <laughs> convenient for everyone here today. <laughs> Katie, thank you so much for everything for this amazing webinar. As a reminder, um, everyone will receive the slide deck and recording. And again, if you have questions, this is how you can contact Katie. Her email is on the screen, also her LinkedIn um, page as well. Again, you'll be receiving this in a follow-up email, so you'll have this contact information. Thanks, everyone. Have we left you wanting more? Our, the second edition of our textbook, Cause Selling the Samford Way, A Guide to Relationship-Driven Fundraising, is available on Amazon um, in ebook and print. Go to causeselling.org to get a free chapter and to sign up for that newsletter so you can learn more about the book and get the textbook. And don't miss our next webinar. Our October one is on stewarding the, the major gift donor. And in September, we're bringing Beth Cantor back to the Sanford Institute of Philanthropy to do a webinar on the Happy Healthy Nonprofit. Register today. Thank you again to our audience for your time and participation. Please help us continue to improve our monthly webinar series and ensure that we're providing as much value to you as possible by taking our survey. In closing, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for all that you do to better the communities in which we live, work, and play and see you on September 18th.